Right here is our normal turning operations square. Everything you want to know about normal turning operations is in this square. All right. We have a, a few gears here, which are always going to be the same for our normal turning operations. Our A gear is going to be 27 and our B gear is 104. We pair in our middle cluster of gears, 56 and 127. This 40 and this 60, you might as well just forget about them because they you never change them ever for any operations. We can just ignore those. And I'm gonna move the camera to the gears and point out uh, where these all are and identify A, B, and all this stuff. All right, here we are on the, the business end of the lathe. And we have our these two gears that I was talking about that never change. This is one of them. This is probably that 60. And this one is that 40. You never change these. I don't, I've never taken them off. I'm not sure if you even can. I imagine this one's replaceable, but this one probably is not. Okay. This one is our A gear. We change this one quite frequently for threading. This one down here is our B gear, okay? This 127 gear never changes. We always have 127, no matter what we're doing on this lathe. For threading, for turning, it's always 127, okay? For normal turning operations, this is the main thing, main difference between threading and normal turning. We have this little itty bitty gear. This is our 27 for an A gear. Our B gear is a big 104. And we have our 127 paired with a 56. This is our normal turning operations. In normal turning operations, we basically have uh, adjustments for the amount that the carriage will move left or right per rotation. That's what all these little numbers st state here. And C, these are our, our least amount of movement left or right per rotation. We have C, this one moves two and a half thousandths, three thousandths, and three and a half thousandths. A is a, sort of our middle group, half a thousandth, or, or five thousandths, six thousandths, seven thousandths. And then this one's much bigger. If you want to remove a lot of material for roughing, this is our B. And we're not changing any of the gears or any of our change gears. The only thing that we're changing are these dials here. And you want to do this when the machine is off. I'm just going to do it right now. All right, so right now it's in A1. We can go to here, A1. Per, per revolution, the carriage will move six thousandths left or right. And that's how you adjust your feed rate on this machine. All right, let's talk about the actual speed at which the headstock will turn. We have two belts and each belt is, is corresponds to three different speeds, all right? So let's talk about the smallest ones or the, the slowest ones. This one, this, These two here, right here, are our slowest speed. That is 150. That's called BC1 if you were to look at the front. But the whole BC, whatever, I don't pay attention to that. I just think, hey, this is my lowest gear, okay? In the middle, we have this gear, and the middle one, that is our second slowest gear. And on the inside here, we have our third. The one thing about this combination, using these two pulleys here, is that we have to use this, this uh, 
idler tensioner. All right, there's a there's a bolt on the back side. You loosen it, and this this idler comes down and applies pressure to the belt. Okay, and then when we want faster turning, we are going to be using these two sets of pulleys. This is the one that drives our chuck, our spindle. This is the one, this is the motor itself. And we can see this belt here. This turns this set of pulleys all the time, no matter what, but it's not gonna be doing anything since we don't actually have a belt attached to that one. We have, this is our fourth slowest or third fastest. And then you move it to the middle. That's gonna be our 1200 RPM. And then this one, all the way over here and all the way over here are going to be our super fast 2400. I almost never use it. It's very fast. It's almost, it's almost scary to use. It's quite fast. All right. Generally, you're not going to use this unless you want to sand something, you know, really quickly or polish something that's in your, in your truck. And that is the speed stuff. Now, obviously when you are threading, it's going to move quite a bit per revolution one way or the other, depending if you have the machine in forward or reverse. Um, so when we're turning, we want the slowest speed possible. And that is gonna be our 150. That's gonna be this gear and then this gear with, along with this tensioner, okay? Let's talk about our metric square. This is our metric square. This is all the information we need to know to turn metric threads. Down here is our imperial square. We're not going to pay attention to that right now, okay? For right now, we need to look at this chart. For the most part, you can ignore most of this information in this little thing. Just know that we're going to have our 127 and our 120 paired together, okay? For every metric thread on this thing, we're going to have a 127 and a 120, okay? Remember, our 40 and 60 don't change. What we need to pay attention to is our A and our B gear, along with our dials down here. Okay, let's just pick a sample thread. Uh, let's do one and a half pitch, all right? We have our, it's kind of dirty, but for one and a half pitch, we go and we see it here, one and a half, and we go left to our a and B gear selection. Our A gear is gonna be 45. Our B gear is gonna be 40, all right? And if we go up, we can see that this corresponds with A. So right now, A, it's an A, okay? And then we go left and we see that it's one, okay? One, all right? That would be the setup for one and a half. All right. If I wanted to change it, you can see that these share a few numbers, these A and B gears. All right. If we wanted to do a 0.875, we would change these dials here. We see this is C3. We change this to C3. Without changing any of these gears from before, we would do a different thread. And that's all this really is. It's just, just kind of a transmission that alters the input over here. And it can do various, various things over there. So let's go over to the gears and I will show you how to set up a one and a half. Here's my little gear selection here. When you get the machine, you're gonna have a 60, a 56, a 52, a 48, 46, 45, 44, 40, 36, and 27s. 104s, a 120, and a 127. I have a couple extras. You use this 104 for turning and these 27s for turning, and that's why I have a couple. Uh, my original ones are a little sad. They still work, but they're a little sad. And then my wrenches over here, this does the, the compound adjustment for your angles. This does the belt for speeds, the three slowest speeds, 17, 
This does my tail stock, and then this does my quick quick change tool post uh, thing here. And this does the uh, how to remove the chuck. And then you got your two belts hanging on the wall. I just showed you, that's how I keep it organized. Okay, we're currently in the turning mode, all right? This is probably the way that your machine will come delivered to you. Uh, this will be touching this gear, but we can ignore that for the second. All right, there's a few adjustments to be made. And before doing this, I recommend taking off the drive belt. You're probably turning and the speed is wrong and you have to adjust it anyways. So just take it off just in case you were to press a button. You know, none of this stuff is going to turn because it's not connected to the motor. All right. If you want to be real safe, the manual says unplug the machine. Uh, you can also just hit the, the emergency stop on the front and that will keep the machine from turning on. Um, I have never accidentally pressed a button and, and caused this thing to turn on in the middle of changing anything over here. I guess it's possible. It's not very likely. I would recommend that you follow the manual, but if you're a rebel like me, you, and you're, you know, if you cut off a finger, too bad, but it saves me time, okay? You can debate about that all you want. Uh, I don't, okay? I just take the belt off. All right, so what we have on the side, we have a six millimeter bolt that loosens and allows this to rotate, okay? I'm just gonna tighten that back up. This is the bolt for our B gear. This is how we take off our B gear. Our A gear has a little C clip. I'm gonna start with that one right now. Well, actually, I'm gonna loosen this B first. Sometimes this is tight and once when all the gears are meshed together, it keeps this, it allows this to come off a little easier to loosen this bolt. It was already loose because I just had it set up. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little screwdriver and just pop this thing off here. All right, this little C-clip, put it down here. All right. And now it allows us, there's a little pin on this shaft that this B-gear sits on. We don't wanna lose that. And sometimes when you pull this off, it can fall off and then fall on the floor along with all your metal shavings. And it's a total pain to, to deal with. We can notice that on the shaft, there's two options here. There's a little spacer that comes off. We can put the gear on the inside or we can put it on the outside. For metric threads, this spacer always goes on the inside. So just put that back the way it was. It's the same as our turning setup, all right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this. Now you can see this bolt bolt a little easier without that gear in the way. Okay, and I'm just gonna tighten it for now so it doesn't come flopping down. I'm just gonna pull this gear off. I'm gonna put it on the wall. I have a little pegboard with all my little change gears. Okay, take this 104, put it off to the side. We're not gonna be using a 104 for threading. All right. This thing here, I do not like at all. I'm just going to say that straight out. When you get the machine, it works for a while. But the problem is that this, this little thing here, it's not tight. I have this thing really tight. And guess what? Still slides. When this is all brand new and it's not worn out like this one is, it works a lot better, but eventually it doesn't. And then when you're in the middle of your threading, all this stuff has to stay in sync. All these gears have to stay connected to each other. Otherwise your cut will be in a different spot when you do another pass. And that's bad, all right? So in order to get this thing off, assuming yours isn't uh, terrible like mine, we loosen this with a 10 millimeter wrench and then we pull this little clip off. Hope you don't lose it. And then we can pull off our... See, here's another thing I don't like about this. Is this little square head. It makes it difficult to get the gears off. All right. This is our 56 that we use for turning. Okay. That's going bye-bye for now. You may possibly use that combination for a different kind of thread. 
but not right now. All right, so this gear also comes off. All right, this is our big 127. We are always gonna be using that gear. Now I'm going to explain this thing here. I made a different piece, and later in the video you can see uh, how to make this piece if you wanna do this mod for yourself. It's a good way to practice uh, turning and uh, threading. So I'm just gonna remove this because I, I never use this. I just have this on here for the sake of the video because you probably have it and you probably want to know how it works. Uh, this has a washer, it has a little cylinder dojobber. It has a little, uh, that thing, which I don't like. Um, and then also back here is a little, little T-nut that the new part that I made will thread into this is just an M6 by one thread here. And I'm going to slide it down in, and I have made it so that I got rid of the washer because let's say you actually have that, that occurrence happen to you where all the gears, this thing, thing loosens up and they all fall out. That washer's on the floor mixed in with a bunch of chips. You're not going to find it without a magnet and, and sweeping the floor. And that can be a real pain in the butt. So my design here, it has a oil channel for squirting oil through and it comes out a hole that you will see later in the video that lubricates this, this surface here. And I put a little seven millimeter hex head for a wrench or a socket. And once I tighten this down, that locks this height position like so. I'm gonna put it all the way up for now at the max height so I can get things on. Okay, and we are doing that uh, that one and a half pitch. So our A gear is gonna be a 45. I'll pull one off the wall. This is our A gear. This is gonna go right here. Okay, and then we can take the clip and install it like so. Okay, we need our 127. Oh, we'll start with this first. I put this little guy on, like so. And there's a little channel on every one of these gears that we are going to utilize. So our 127 is always gonna make contact with our A gear. Now we need 120 gear. This is our metric threading gear. And that goes on. This is our middle gear pairing. Oops, that's a 127, that's not a 120. Here's, what's this one? Here's my 120. I actually have two 127s, and I'll explain that in a little bit, why I have two of them. Uh, so that goes on. This is our pairing, okay? Now this, this 120 is going to make contact with our B gear, and our B gear is a 40. Let's put that on, all right? And then, we can use the my system here to lower it down onto the B gear and then just set the height. You don't want this to be so tight together that it's really hard to turn. Okay, and my modification requires a little bit different system than that, that, those, that little clip. I just put a washer on, I put a a nut on, and I just put that finger tight for now. Let's grab another washer, all right, and I got a little jam net, okay. And what I do for my system is this, it's a little bit tight now because I just made it tight, but I lock these two nuts together using two different wrenches. Let's see if I've got another 17 floating around. This is a 17. And here's my other side. All right. So I lock these two together like so. You can test it, see if it's rotating nicely. And it is. It's nice and free. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is grab my six, six millimeter, and loosen this bolt and push it up against our A gear. Our 127 is going to come into contact with our A gear. Okay. And then what I do 
Last, now that this is all synced together, it makes this bolt a little bit easier to tighten. And we're going to tighten this. I got a little piece of metal left stuck in there. Uh, I'll hold these gears in place and tighten that. Okay, now it's set up so that when our headstock turns, all these gears mesh together and our carriage will move depending if we're in A1 or not one and a half millimeters per revolution, okay? When it goes backwards, there's a little bit of slop, and I explain this later in the video when I do threading. We wanna move our cutter away from the workpiece when we're going backwards, assuming that we were cutting in the in the forward direction, okay? But once we go, once we re resume going forward again, everything lines up again, that backlash is gone, and it'll cut in the exact same spot. All right, let me grab my drumstick here. Let's talk about the Imperial setup, okay? I haven't changed it from my metric uh, one and a half setup. It's still in that set setting, all right? So we can look at this, and before I used a 45 for my, my A gear and a 40 for my B gear. Uh, see if you can tell if there's another thread that uses those two gears. Give you a little bit of time, I see it right now, but it is this one here. We can see our A is a 45, our B is a 40, and from those two gears we can do 8, 16, or 32, depending on what these are set to. And you might think, well, that would imply that these somehow are the same as one and a half because they're using all the same things, but they're not. Okay, and I will show you why in a second. All right, here is the why. It is different. Remember I told you that this thing had two positions? This is where this comes in, all right? So if I wanted to do 8, 16, or 32 using this 45 and this 40, I need to get that out of the way, all right? I'm going to be loosening this screw. Do I have the right wrench? Yes, I do. I'm just going to move it up just to get that out of the way. All right. Oh, I forgot to uh, loosen this first. Let's see if I can do it. Brute strength here. Oh, I liked it. All right. So the difference between metric and imperial threading is the position of your B gear. It is not the same thread as a one and a half. Okay, what I'm going to do for imperial threading is I'm gonna pull that off. I'm gonna pull the spacer off. Make sure you leave your little key thing, this comes off. And we are going to put our 40, oh, it fell off, on the inside. All right. I put this little spacer back on and then I will tighten this nut down with a washer. The difference is we have our 127 and our 120 middle gear section. The 120 is not used. Even though it shows a 120 on the chart for imperial threading, it doesn't actually come into play because our B gear will be contacting our 127 and or I mean our A gear will be contacting our 127 and it will be contacting our B gear. So all this 120 does is act as a spacer. It could be any gear as long as it's the same thickness, which they all are. So I will just loosen this up. All right. Slide it down into that one and then I'll get my washer. And I'm not actually going to be threading these threads. I'm just showing you for this video. Okay, I'm just going to do it hand tight because I'm not intending to use this. And then I will loosen this and put it in contact with our B A gear. All right, we are now set up. I'm not currently having an A1. What does that make? That makes 16 threads per inch, okay? According to our chart. All right, so when it turns, It'll move 1 16th of an inch per revolution. 
of our headstock here. You also need to know this for threading. I explained it earlier in the video. We want this in our slowest gear, which is this one. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my 17 off the wall. You can't see this, I can't even see it. But there's a bolt, there's a nut on the backside and I'm just gonna move this into position and tighten that down. Okay, now this belt is tight and it's in our slowest speed. We are ready for, turn, or for threading. All right, I'm gonna show you something that is kind of a hard solution to find on the internet. Um, I didn't actually find it on the internet. I just thought it up. But remember when I said I had an extra 127 gear? This machine cannot do left-handed threads as it is. And this thing, you can see, this is not part of the machine originally. That's something else. All right, so I made this actually before I even had a mill. This thing here, I have a little nut that goes on, and this thing is movable. I don't even know what size this is. This is a, is it 9 16ths? I haven't done any left hand threads, no, it's something else. 15? Can that work? Yeah, it will work. All right, this slides back and forth. All right, now the key is you need, you gotta buy one, you're gonna need an extra 127 gear. And why 127? Because I don't wanna alter the gearing. So if a 127 comes into contact with the 127, the gearing will remain the same because they're both the same size. And what I do is I slide this into position and I will lock this in place. And then I use this, this nut, which has a, an Allen. It's a split, split nut kind of a thing here. And I tighten that down and that keeps it from uh, rotating off or sliding off. And then this 127 comes into contact with the, the new 127. And boom, with the addition of one gear, it causes the, the rotation to be backwards from what it normally is. Don't listen to anybody online. You cannot use this machine for left-handed threads. You can't put it in reverse and cut left-handed threads normally. The only way it works is if you change the, the, the relation between the spindle direction and the lead screw direction. This ultimately drives our lead screw. With the addition of one gear, it reverses that orientation. If I were to add an extra gear, it would be back to normal. But that is how left-handed threading is possible on this machine. You didn't know that, but now you do.